fastidious foo here. Today I'll be showing you how to replace a processor and install a new CPU cooler. The first thing to do is remove the CPU cooler by unhooking the connectors and unscrewing the screws from all four sides. And now that I've removed the CPU fan, you can see the CPU itself. You will notice that it has sticky silver paste all over it. And this is called a thermal paste. It helps efficiently transfer heat from your CPU to CPU cooler. And with the paper towel, I'm very carefully wiping off the thermal paste from the processor while it's still in its socket. And this is to prevent pin damage. And now I'm going to open up the latch to remove the remaining thermal paste from the edges. And although I'm not showing it in the video, please be sure to wipe off the thermal paste from the bottom of your CPU cooler's heatsink as well. And now I'm going to use a cotton swab with a little bit of rubbing alcohol to remove the remaining thermal paste. And uh, be sure to use only a moderate amount of rubbing alcohol so that it does not drip. Um, and now that the processor is relatively clean, I can gently pick up the processor and this is how you remove the CPU from your computer. I'm going to put the CPU that I've just removed into a new motherboard. And this is a LGA1151 socket. It is very important to note that this socket has two different versions under the same name. The first one supports Skylake and Kaby Lake CPUs, and the second revision only supports the Coffee Lake CPUs. When you're placing the processor into the socket, make sure to align the notch on the processor to the grooves in the socket, and close the latch to secure it into its place. I'll be using the Cooler Masters Hyper 212 CPU cooler on this computer. I'm putting the back plate for the cooler onto the bottom of the motherboard. And the cooler came with the riser screws. So I'm putting these into their places to secure the back plate by hand first. And then I'll be using the socket that came with the kit to tighten the screws into their places. Then I'll be putting the brackets onto the heat sink. Flip the heat sink over, um, put the bracket beneath the upside down heat sink and tighten it with the screws. And repeat on the other side as well. And you might notice that I'm using the brackets that are the right size for the Intel processor sockets, um, but the mounting kit for the cooler also comes with the AMD ones as well. And now I will be applying the thermal paste onto the processor and I'm using the Noctua NTH1 thermal paste instead of the thermal paste that came with the cooler. And put a very tiny amount, probably about the size of baby's pinky fingernail. And then peel off the label from the heat sink. Center the heat sink with the processor and then firmly press the heat sink onto the processor to spread the thermal paste in one smooth motion. And now we can secure the heat sink's brackets onto the mounting plate. So I've decided to use Noctua's NFF12 fan for the CPU cooler fan instead of the fan that came with the Hyper 212 CPU cooler by Cooler Master. I'm putting the brackets that came with the Cooler Master onto the Noctua fan using their anti-vibration mounts. These mounts are a little bit tricky to use. First pull them into the bracket and then pull the silicon end with a little bit of force to put the bracket into the fan. And then of course do this on the other side of the bracket and put the other bracket onto the opposite end of the fan. Then plug the CPU fan connector into the motherboard and attach the fan onto the heat sink by aligning the notch on the bracket with the notch on the heat sink on one side first and then press the other side until you hear a clicking noise. And that is how you install a CPU and a CPU cooler.